स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया So, let us look at an example in geometric optics. Geometric optics. So, let me say that I am given a variable, I am given a coordinate system x of y, x, y, z, where z now is the independent variable and, and my z lies in the interval which is a subset of R. It describes, Z describes a curve, Z describes a curve gamma, right. Then, then my optical path, my optical path uh, of length, my optical path of length gamma uh, in a medium optical path of length gamma in a medium with refractive index. So, I am going to, uh, so with a refractive index, refractive index, uh, index n of x comma y comma z is, so the optical path is given by the extremal x, well, extremal j y of the integral from x 0 to x 1 of n of x y z times the arc length integral x x prime uh, x prime square plus y prime square d z. Okay? So, so, to find to make sure that the curve described by gamma is the optical path length or the path length which takes, which is the shortest path length traveled by the particle of light. Uh, the, the answer to this uh, is given by extremizing this path length or the arc length integral. Okay? So, uh, so, we can directly apply our formats principle. Again, I am following our, real, our example done in lecture 3. We have used a simpler version of extremizing this, uh, a simpler integral where n was taken to be 1. So, by Fermat's principle, I see that the necessary condition, the necessary condition uh, for gamma to be, to be light, light ray is that j is stationary or j has an extremum, j is stationary or j has an extremum. Uh, so, so let, uh, let me, in order to find the extremal of this functional, let me introduce uh, new sets of variables. So, my new variable q1 is x, my new variable q2 is y and my uh, new variable z my new variable t is equal to z, which is the independent variable, right. So, now I have uh, the length of the interval from z 0 to z 1 is changed to t 0 to t 1, right. And then further, further note that my Lagrangian, uh, my Lagrangian L of t comma q bar comma q bar dot is given by is given by n of t comma q bar well this is this this is this quantity transformed in the new variable time square root of 1 plus q bar dot square right okay so this is the so called optical lagrangian well, let me call this as the optical Lagrangian right away. 
Okay. So, then the next step to solve this and find the extremal is to introduce our conjugate variables p and h. So, I introduce introduce our variable p. So, p k is partial l partial q k dot and by the definition of l this comes out to be n times q k dot just plug in the expression for l and I see that this is partial. So, n by n q k dot divided by 1 plus mod q bar dot square right. Uh, so, and also from here I can see uh, note that I have the relation that p 1 square plus p 2 square minus n square it comes right away from this expression for p k is equal to minus n square by 1 plus mod q bar dot square right ok or or my function q k dot uh, q k dot can be derived from this relation my q k dot is p k by n times square root of 1 plus q bar dot square right ok and this is well, I can always, I can always from here I can see that 1 plus mod q bar dot square is, uh, is n square divided by n square minus p 1 square minus p 2 square. So, from here I see that this is also equal to p k by n times, uh, times square root of n square by n square minus p 1 square minus p 2 square. I see that this is also equal to p k by square root of n square minus p 1 square minus p 2 square. Okay. So, then, then my Hamiltonian, my Hamiltonian uh, h the new the other new variable is defined as follows h of t comma q bar comma p bar in terms of these variables is by definition summation of q k dot p k k from 1 to n minus l right and after plugging in all the values I have already defined q k in terms of p k I see that this is also equal to summation p k by square root n square minus p 1 square minus p 2 square and k is from 1 to 2 times times p k minus l now l is n square by square root n square minus p 1 square minus p 2 square ok and then after substitution i get after simplification i get that this is also equal to n square minus p 1 square minus p 2 square and that is my hamiltonian so the moment i have defined i have defined my conjugate variables described by this checked uh, checked relation, I can immediately write the Hamilton's equation. The Hamilton's equation, the Hamilton's equations are as follows. I see that q k dot is partial h partial p k, the first relation and we can directly plug in the expression for h. We get that this is also equal to p k by square root n square minus p 1 square minus p 2 square. Okay. So, this is a 2 D problem here, 2 dependent variable problem and my variable p k dot is equal to minus del h del q k del h del q k which is uh, which is after substituting we get the following relation n square minus p 1 square minus p 2 square times del n del q k. So, so th this, so from here all we need to do is to find our to solve this system of equation uh, and that can only be done once we have an exact, uh, an exact relation for n. We do not know what is this function n. So, I leave this question at this point assuming that the Hamilton's equation can is solvable, right. So, these are my Hamilton's equation. So, so, at this stage we know, 
we know that once we are in the Hamiltonian formulation, uh, we are very easily, we should be very easily be able to solve our uh, Euler, uh, uh, we should be very easily be able to solve to give, to get our extremals via the Hamiltonian, via the Hamilton's equation, right. So, this question is, is that true? Uh, given a Hamiltonian system, can we really solve all the time, can we really solve the Hamilton's equation? The answer is not really. It depends how complicated this function h is, right. If, so this question is, suppose h is quite complex that we are not able to solve the system of uh, Hamilton's equations, then can we reduce that system or reduce that Hamiltonian to a simpler case or a simpler Hamiltonian? The answer is yes. And to reduce from a more complex to a simpler Hamiltonian, we use a transformation or a map known as the symplectic maps. Okay. So, what are symplectic maps? Symplectic maps. Okay. Let me denote it by S m. So, S m, so S m is a transformation. So, S m is a transformation right s m is a transformation from from the phase space s m is a transformation from the phase space uh, q bar comma p bar to the phase space uh, to a new phase space q bar comma capital q bar comma capital p bar and of course th there will be the hamiltonian in this space is h and the hamiltonian in this space is h hat not necessarily identically or functionally equivalent but uh, the idea is we are reducing a Hamiltonian which is far more complicated to a Hamiltonian which is simpler. So, let S m be the transformation from one phase space to the other uh, defined, uh, defined by the following relation. So, q k is q k of t comma q bar comma p and p k is p k of t comma q bar comma p right. So, this is my map such that, uh, such that, well I need to define certain relations. Uh, Let us go back a few slides. Where is my Hamiltonian mechanism? Well, Hamiltonian, Hamilton's equation uh, here. So, my Hamilton's, this set of equations or the Hamilton's equations are de denoted by 2. So, we are going to use this this numbering 2. So, in this result, it says that such that, such that the Hamiltonian, the or sorry, the Hamilton's equation, the Hamilton's equation 2 uh, or I would say the Hamiltonian system, such that the Hamiltonian the Hamiltonian system given by the Hamilton's equation 2 transforms, transforms into another, another, uh, another Hamiltonian system, Hamiltonian system, right, uh, where I am given that q k dot is equal to del transformed into another Hamiltonian system h hat, right. Uh, the older Hamiltonian system was h, the new Hamiltonian system is h hat, such that now, such that the Hamilton's equation is still preserved. So, q k dot is del h hat del capital P k and P k dot is minus del h hat del capital Q k right q k. So, my Hamilton's equation are still preserved, right. So, here note that my h, the original Hamiltonian system was a function of the variable small q small p and my new Hamiltonian system is a function of capital Q and capital P, right, ok. So, so in note that symplectic maps so, that is the definition of my symplectic maps. Note that symplectic maps, 
symplectic maps are also known as canonical transformations. Okay, symplectic maps are also canonical transformation, a map which changes the coordinate system, but preserves the Hamilton equation. Okay. What are canonical maps? A map which this is in layman's term which changes the coordinate system, but preserves, but preserves the Hamilton's equation. Right, Hamilton's equation in the new system is also uh, is is still satisfied. Okay. So which means, which means that the corresponding, the corresponding extremals, well, the corresponding functionals, uh, functionals in the T comma Q comma P framework are given by J of Q bar, which is integral from T0 to T1 L of T comma Q bar comma Q bar dot dt and the corresponding functional in T comma capital Q comma capital P bar is of the form J of capital Q bar, which is integral T0 to T1 L of T comma Q bar comma P bar dt. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, well, if we have Q dot here, so this will be Q dot here with a capital. Okay. Such that, such that my Lagrangian of T comma Q comma Q uh, dot is of the form summation P K Q K dot K from 1 to N minus H of T comma P bar comma Q bar and my Lagrangian in the new coordinate system is summation uh, P k Q k dot k from 1 to n minus h of t comma uh, t comma p comma q. Okay. So, so which means uh, we term we introduce a new term known as the variationally equivalent. We say that j so let me call this function as j hat to differentiate it from j. So, j and j hat are called as variationally equivalent. So, they are variationally variationally equivalent functionals, they are variationally equivalent if, if they produce the same extremals, if they produce the same extremals. if they produce the same extremals. Okay. From here, uh, okay. uh, so, so the symplectic map uh, is the map which changes the functional j fro to functional j hat that is via changing the coordinate system. Right? So, it is a, so symplectic, uh, the symplectic maps are quite important in our investigation of finding uh, the Hamiltonian system. Why? Because symplectic maps is a transformation from one set of extremals to another. Right? So, we definitely in our descri description of symplect in our description of our Hamiltonian system, finding symplectic maps is critical. It is a transformation from one set of extremals to another. to another. Okay. Now, this question is, well, having seen the importance, this question is, how are we going to find the symplectic maps? Uh, one way of finding the symplectic maps uh, involves the introduction of the so called generating function, right? and we will see what are those. So, one method, one method of finding, of finding symplectic maps symplectic maps uh, involves 
involves uh, introduction introduction of a generating function introduction of a generating function right it is the generating function through the generating function later on we will describe the famous hamilton jacobi equation so uh, so let us see what we have just said okay so i want to uh, elaborate on this statement further okay so suppose suppose i am given uh, i am given a smooth function phi there exists a smooth function phi such that such that summation summation p k q k dot minus h of t comma q bar comma p bar. So, what is this? What is this sum? This is the Lagrangian, right? So, this is the Lagrangian. So, the Lagrangian in one frame is equal to the Lagrangian Lagrangian in the other frame. right plus uh, plus uh, the derivative of phi with respect to t t comma p comma q bar the derivative of phi with respect to t uh, so assuming uh, so suppose such a phi exists right so this is my lagrangian l hat so, assuming j and j hat are variationally equivalent. So, assuming that uh, one set of function extremals could be converted to the other set uh, via the symplectic map. So, suppose j and j hat are the functionals corresponding to these Lagrangians are variationally equivalent, variationally equivalent, right? Uh, and the map and the map, the map given by q k which is uh, q k well q k or q bar which is q bar of t comma uh, q bar comma p bar and p bar uh, is capital P bar of the old variables or the variable in the older coordinate frame uh, is symplectic. Suppose this map is symplectic is a symplectic map S m. Okay. So, then which means the moment this map is symplectic we can it implies that we can convert we can convert my function phi from one set of coordinate frame to the other set right. We can convert this from one to the other. So, phi is the same phi. So, q bar comma capital Q bar. So, we have just replaced one conjugate variable p with uh, with capital Q. Okay. So, then so then let us rewrite let me call this as this equation as star. So, we rewrite our equation star we rewrite star in in the generalized coordinate or in the new coordinate frame. rewrite star in the generalized coordinate frame we see that this is also equal to d phi d t phi now is a function of small q comma capital Q right because of the symplectic map minus p k q k dot minus capital p k capital q k dot k from 1 to n plus h hat. So, I have just rearranged all the terms here plus h hat uh, p comma q minus h of t comma p comma q right. So, let me call this relation as a right. Now, now, uh, now we rewrite this left hand side again. So, using using chain rule using chain rule I see that d phi d t is also equal to summation k from 1 to n it is 
डेल फाइ डेल क्यू के डेल फाइ डेल क्यू के टाइम्स क्यू के डॉट नोट दैट फाइ इज ए फंक्शन ऑफ क्यू एंड कैपिटल क्यू एज वेल राइट प्लस डेल फाइ डेल कैपिटल क्यू के टाइम्स कैपिटल क्यू के डॉट राइट एंड दिस इज ऑल अंडर समेशन प्लस डेल फाइ पार्शल फाइ पार्शल टी सो द टोटल डेरिवेटिव ऑफ फाइ इज इज द सम ऑफ दीज पार्शल डेरिवेटिव नाउ लेट मी कॉल दिस रिलेशन एज बी सो नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू कंपेयर सो वॉट आई एम ट्राइंग टू डू इज आई एम ट्राइंग टू फाइंड एन अप्रोप्रिएट इक्वेशन फॉर द दिस जनरेटिंग फंक्शन फाइ राइट सो दिस इज ऑल कैपिटल फाइव ओके सो कंपेयरिंग ए एंड बी आई सी दैट I see that. Note that uh, the coefficient of q k dot is p k. I see that p k is partial phi, partial q k, and capital p k is partial phi, partial q k. Right? I call this relation as C. And well we have a minus sign also so this will have a minus sign and finally so note that this c so c c gives the relation the relation describing the the generating function describing the generating function describing the generating function through which we find out the generating function and that leads to our symplectic map we will see through an example and then we use c using c and and a so once we have compared everything all that it remains is that the partial phi partial t is the sum of this uh, this hamiltonian so using c and a all i am left with is that h hat of t comma q comma p bar is equal to h of t comma p well t comma q bar comma p bar plus partial phi partial t right so my so this is the relation uh, uh, so well uh, let me just uh, take back few words so the first set of relation c is the relation describing describing the symplectic map and this relation describes describes the generating function describes the generating function phi okay so we are ready to look at uh, how the look at the power of symplectic maps through some examples okay so the example i have is the following so the example is that of the harmonic oscillator harmonic oscillator right let me call this as ho so the hamiltonian for the hamiltonian for the hamiltonian for the linear harmonic oscillator is h given to be the sum of the kinetic energy plus the potential energy and i write it in terms of the conjugate variable p and q so the hamiltonian is given by 1 by 2m times p square plus omega square q square right where we see that where we see that q is the position q is the position and p is well the constants the variable q is the position m is the mass and t is the time of integration which we will see soon so these are my variables my p is the momentum and what else my w well in newtonian mechanics w denotes a physical quantity known as the angular velocity here we will denote w to be a constant without going much into detail so it's a constant uh, constant right okay so which means which means my hamilton's equation the moment we have a 
Hamiltonian, my Hamilton's equation are as follows. Equations are Q dot is equal to partial H partial P, right? So, which I can find that this is also equal to P, P by M, right? And my P dot is minus partial H partial Q, which is also equal to minus omega square Q by M, okay? So, that is my Hamilton's equation and the rest, so we need to find uh, to, so to describe, to describe this Hamilton's equation in another Hamiltonian, uh, we need the symplectic map and so on and so forth, right? So, uh, well, symplectic map and then we need the so called generating function, right? Later on, we will see that the generating, finding generating function is very methodical. Right now, using some hit and trial, we assume a form of generating function and the form is chosen so that the Hamiltonian in the new coordinate frames is uh, very, very simple. Okay? So, let us, uh, so we choose, we choose our generating function phi of Q comma capital, capital Q to be omega Q square by 2 cot cot q, right? So, this is my generating function that we have chosen. Again, right now, right now the choice seems very arbitrary. In the next topic of discussion, we will see that the choice is not random, but follows a very specific set of equations, okay, or the Hamilton-Jacobi equation. So, let us assume the generating function of this form, right? So, from here, I can describe my, my variables. Note that the moment I have the generating function, I can describe using this C, condition C, I can describe my momenta variables, P k and capital P k, right? So, the generalized, well, the momenta coordinates, the momenta coordinates are, are P, which is equal to partial phi, partial Q and my capital P is minus partial phi partial capital Q, right? And from the above, I get that partial phi partial Q is omega Q cot cot capital Q via this relation that we have assumed. And from the second one, I get that this is also equal to omega Q square by 2 sin square q or cos 1 by sin square q or cosecant square q, okay? So, so we can also, we can also invert, we can also invert to find, uh, to find the relation between small q and capital Q to see that my small q, so my origin, in the original coordinate frame, the coordinates q and p can be written in terms of capital Q and capital P. So, this turns out to be 2 p by omega times sin capital Q and small p turns out to be 2 p omega cos capital Q, right? This can be readily checked from this relation and, and so these are my symplectic maps, right? So, uh, so So, these are, let me call this as star and this relation as double star. So, star and double star are my symplectic maps in, uh, uh, in one coordinate or the other, right? So, which means now I am ready to describe my Hamiltonian in the new coordinate frame. So, the Hamiltonian of uh, P, P comma Q in the new frame is well 1 by 2 m, it is the Hamiltonian in the original frame p square plus omega square q square, right? So, I can readily substitute in this frame. We see that this is also equal to 1 by 2 m times uh, I plug p square which is uh, square root 2 p omega cos q times 
to the power whole square plus uh, omega square p q square which I get to be omega square square root of 2 p by omega sin q right this is whole square I see that I see that uh, this is h hat ok. So, once we simplify this expression I see that this is also equal to omega by m times capital P. So, notice now the Hamiltonian in this new frame capital P capital Q is relatively simple compared to the Hamiltonian in the original frame small p small q right. So, if I were to, so, so which means my Hamilton's equation in this frame let me denote it by the associated Hamilton's equation Hamilton's equation in this new frame capital P capital Q is let me call this capital Q dot capital P dot is del h hat del P and this is del minus del h hat del Q from here I get that this is omega by m by the relation that I have just found and this since h is independent cap h hat is independent of q I get that this is equal to 0. From here I can quickly solve for capital Q which is omega by m times t plus a constant of integration c 1 and capital P is the constant of integration c 2. Note that now I have found the solution to the Euler Lagrange in a frame capital Q capital P. So, all I do is uh, we we plug we plug this variables into our expression double star to find small q and small p and we get. So, we get that small q after plugging in all the expression is 2 c 2 by omega sin omega t by m plus c 1 and p is square root 2 c 2 omega cos omega by m t plus c 1 right. So, these are my my variables in the original frame and these are my solution to the Euler Lagrange equation. So, so this exercise in this example has shown how can we use the power of Hamilton's equation symplectic maps and generating function to quickly arrive at the extremals which would have been very difficult to solve had we used the Euler Lagrange approach. Okay?